Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to this new webinar. Uh, we're happy to see you today. Maybe you have been here for the previous one. If you want to watch them, uh, they are available on YouTube, and I will share the link later. So they are replaced. This webinar will also be recorded, so you can um, watch it later. Today, we were supposed to host Zvein and Martin, but Zvein had a problem with uh, his firewall, so we will have Martin presenting the whole presentation. But if you have questions, uh, both of them will be able to answer, and Vanya will also be here to answer. So they will present different options for the transportation of CO2 from Dunkirk to the identified potential storage sites, as well as the environmental and social issues related to the creation of the future European North Sea cluster in Dunkirk. If you have any questions during the session, please feel free to ask them in the tab at the bottom of your screen. You also have a chat just to speak between each other, but it's really in the question tab that you should uh, ask questions. You can also use the chat room to talk about everything or a simple question about how it works, for example. And we will answer all the questions at the end of the presentation. So, Martin, now you can start your presentation. Thank you. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin Hay. I'm responsible for business development, Brevik Engineering, and I've also been project manager on on Brevik's side for, for this project. Unfortunately, uh, Svein, er uh, Svein um, Erik from uh, Gasco should have been with us today, but uh, they have extremely uh, tight security arrangements uh, in Gasco, and that is due to uh, Gasco being the body that controls the all the pipelines, gas pipelines going from Norway into Europe, and uh, so. Uh, around 40 percent of all gas that comes to europe is uh, is controlled by 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 gasco so so that uh, so that there were extremely strict uh, security arrangements so that's the reason why um okay uh let's move on um uh ccs it's uh it's we, we normally call it ccs but actually it should be cc ccts because between capture and storage, there is uh, some transportation that needs to be done. Uh, what we show here uh, is uh, is basically the value chain for uh, for uh, CCTS uh, all the way from capture, conditioning, transport, and storage. Uh, transport can be done by pipeline, shipping, or a combination of the two. Uh, for uh, pipeline uh, transport, uh, uh, the CO2 will be uh, conditioned and compressed uh, for uh, to dense phase. That's a relatively high pressure, so it can it can be pushed through the pipeline to to uh, the storage site. For uh, uh, shipping. Uh, there will also be uh, conditioning, which is uh, we, free, uh, we, free, we cool the CO2 down to uh, a certain level, and then we also uh, uh, compress the CO2 so it becomes liquid. Uh, in this project, we were uh, looking for a possible uh, offtake. Uh, solutions for the future uh, CCS uh, or capture project in Dunkirk uh, in France in with Asilor Metals uh, steel mill. We uh, we looked in the around the North Sea basin. Uh, we found uh, we saw that there are several uh, potential projects uh, ar ongoing around uh, Europe. Uh, uh, the most mature one is the Northern Lights facility uh, out on the west uh, on the west coast of Norway. This is uh, related to the Norwegian Longship project, and they are actually uh, they are building their facility now. 
Then we were also uh, looking at a uh, possibility uh, for a Dutch offtake. This is very close to Dunkirk, so that's uh, that should be a good solution. And we were also looking into the possibility of having a independent storage reservoir for the for the three D project. So uh, so therefore we ended up with a, a, a concept number one, which is the standalone solution uh, concept two the northern lights and then uh, concept three the the, the dutch uh, option uh, we, that could be both Artemis, portos or other initiatives which is are on the way in in holland uh, the northern lights project that this as this was the most mature this was selected as the base case uh, it will require shipping from uh, from from Dunkirk to to the facility. I'll show that in the next picture. And what is important is that uh, the requirement there was um, minus the CO two would be minus uh, uh, thirty degrees and fifty bar uh, pressure, and port limits for the ship was one hundred and thirty meters and uh, eight point five meters draft. Yeah, here we show uh, we show the the route where the where the the, the transport route, uh, as we say, from Dunkirk to Colsnes, the only relevant option of transport, was by ship, to the Dutch offtake uh, to a potential Dutch uh, offtake or or storage facility, both uh, pipeline and shipping transport could be relevant. To the standalone facility uh, in the uh, North Sea, uh, both uh, 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 pipeline and uh, uh, shipping with direct off uh, offshore unloading uh, could be possible. Those are the uh, those are the options that was explored in in this study. Yeah. Uh, when we go, yeah, we go back to this previous slide. Yes, we we see we um, uh, we ended up with uh, as, a, as shown earlier. Uh, it was uh, the length of the ship was maximum 150, 130 meters. This meant that we had the limitation of how big ships we could have. Uh, so we ended up uh, with the need for two ships uh, for 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 this northern lies. Uh, project. Uh, there will, however, uh, in the future, be possibility to take in larger ships to this facility. But for for this study, for the base case, it we, we needed two ships. We looked at uh, two smaller ships, which uh, uh, had a speed of, of fifteen knots, and two larger ships, which has ha would have the speed of ten knots. That it's not. 10 knots here it's, it's just slow steaming okay um yeah for shipping uh it's you in addition to the ship you also need to store the co2 in each end of the uh, of the transportation chain or trans yeah so uh the larger ship uh the more co2 you must store in each end both at the export facility and import facility and we Based on uh, these calculations, we have made uh, calculations regarding size of the, the the storage facility. We also here included a one ship solution to show that even if you do savings on the ship, you your cost of uh, uh, of storage in each end will increase. These are the two ships that we uh, developed. Uh, one of the ships, this is uh, for uh, uh, 7,500 tons. It's very like, it's very similar to the ships that uh, are will be used in Norwegian longship project. And we made one sh uh, ship that was a bit bigger. It has these bilobe tanks, as you see. Uh, this had its capacity of 10.8 uh, of, uh, kiloton capacity. Both have a length of 130 meters. Uh, the, this larger ship has a, it's slightly uh, has a larger beam, and uh, 
but uh, except for that much uh, and of course more carbon capacity but except for that it's uh, it's uh, many similarities uh, yes so uh, there is also one more advantage of having uh, larger ships that moves uh, with a lower cruising speed compared to having smaller ships with a high cruising speed and that is that the the larger ship with a low cruising speed can actually increase uh, its speed and uh, hereby uh, increase the capacity of the transport chain. We tried to show that here, that uh, uh, sh uh, this base case ship that we've chosen by increasing speed from 10 to 14 and a half knots, we can increase the capacity in the value chain from 1 to 1.3 million tons per year, equivalent uh, with two ships. Uh, I mentioned also the one ship solution. Uh, if uh, in the future it will be po possible to uh, to dock larger ships at the Colsnos terminal, we could have uh, sh uh, larger ships. But as you see, these are uh, has a length uh, which is they're longer than uh, is possible to to dock at uh, the plan the, the terminal plan today. So there are for a with, when you go for larger ships, you can also uh, consider having lower temperature and lower pressure in your uh, of CO2. And when you have lower pressure, you can increase the uh, tank diameter. And then you can go from having two tanks in parallel to having one. And this way, you can have a smaller ship. Uh, and uh, th th in that way, it will also be savings both on the CAPEX side, but also on the oper operational side, as the smaller ship uh, will have a lower fuel consumption. You need a smaller engine and lower fuel consumption. Uh, over to the Dutch, uh, of the, the, the shipping to the, to the Dutch um, terminal. This is very short distance, so uh, only one small ship was needed. Uh, We've calculated that the capacity of uh, 5,410 tons it would be sufficient. You could also have a larger uh, ship uh, which, uh, with fewer port entries, and that, in this case, may be, may be a good idea. But uh, for the case here, we've, uh, we reckon that the ship makes, uh, has a cruising speed of 10 knots, and it, has, uh, it will have a length of... Uh, a bit more than 100 meters, a beam of a uh, less, bit less than 20 meters. Um, for the for the Dutch uh, for shipping to a Dutch terminal, there will also be other options as uh, as we've shown here, uh, a virtual pipeline with a push barge solution. Uh, for the uh, now we're on to concept three. That is a standalone concept. For this concept, we will need to do offshore unloading. There is no uh, jetty there to unload a, a boat. So uh, then we have two options. We can have a floating terminal, as this, uh, or we can have uh, uh, direct injection from the ship. Uh, the floating terminal uh, would have will uh, be permanently moored. Uh, at the reservoir, it had, will have a quite large uh, uh, capacity of CO2. So, it, uh, so if you're not able to unload the CO2 for periods, it, it can continue to inject with uh, with the surplus uh, with the extra CO2 which is stored on board. Uh, this option you don't will not have on uh, a ship with which does direct injection. Here, uh, uh, the, uh, the ship is connected by via uh, an STL. This is uh, technology which is very well known from oil and gas industry. So it's uh, mature technology. Uh, it will have a pretreatment uh, uh, plant on board. That, uh, uh, this pretreatment plant will heat the CO2 from minus 30 degrees up to uh, plus uh, one, two, or three degrees, something like that. 
and then it will be pressurized to 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 inject the co2 via a riser like you see here into the into the reservoir there are several ways of mooring uh, uh, of uh, of of connecting the ship this is stl we, we think this is the most uh, uh, this is the most robust solution but there, there you can also go for sol solution which is cheaper or a power and uh, um, uh, tower loading uh, solution which is provided by uh, it's uh, that's a uh, proprietary technology from from SBM the advantage with this uh, uh, tower loading unit is that it can be uh, installed in very shallow waters this uh, this uh, solution here will require uh, uh, larger water depths yes so uh, yeah, we can we see that this this is this is a quite different concept having a storage facility on uh, uh, at the offloading for, uh, at the, um, the site of the reservoir and this uh, offshore injection directly from from the ship uh, yes um, well in short we've consider both this FSI, this floating storage and injection unit, and direct offloading. And our conclusion is that the, uh, there are, there are uh, the cost of the direct uh, injection unit will be uh, significantly lower than having an FSI, but it will also be uh it it will also not be as robust you can will uh you will uh you you will experience um that uh, that you will not be able to connect due to bad weather etc so it's not as reliable a logistic solution so with uh, as with an fsi so for further studies we've said that the fsi it's most comparable to a land terminal or a pipeline so this is we use uh, the fsi in the further studies uh yes uh, what's also interesting is to look at the co2 emissions from the the ship transport itself and here we see that uh, uh the, the, here we see for all of the of the options um for we see that the the Dutch uh, option is, of course, very low. This is a percentage of the of the CO two which is actually transported. So the Dutch option is very; it's a short distance, so you get very low emissions. For the um, here, we see the two sizes of ships: the the large ship, uh, which takes ten point eight uh, kilotons, it which operates at fifty knots, and the five, uh, seven point five uh, ton capacity ship that operates on on fifteen knots, and what you see here, it's a significant dif difference. The, uh, the 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 smaller ships which operate at high speed has actually uh, uh, emissions represent uh, one percent extra. So this by uh, by reducing the uh, transport uh, uh, the, the the cruising speed and going for a larger ship, we actually uh, increase the capture rate by one percent. Uh, yeah, so cost uh, we've ha here for for the three alternatives we have looked into what it costs. So um, for these are the two options where we go to to Kolsnes uh, in Norway. Uh, we see that for the large, two large ships, uh, the cost is uh, 28.2 uh, euros per ton CO2, and it's slightly higher with the uh, with two ship, with two smaller ships, it goes faster. And that's due to uh, it's due to the OPEX uh, from from high fuel consumption. The Dutch uh, the Dutch soft take is uh, not su uh, surprisingly the the cheapest 15.6 uh, euros per ton. The direct offshore unloading is uh, has 30, uh, 39.7 for the FSI for the floating storage uh, unit and 31.1 uh, for the 
uh, for the direct injection. But these figures are not uh, comparable to this because the battery limits are a bit different. So uh, to the pipeline solution. Um, uh, the pipeline uh, it's contains of uh, of uh, several elements the the pump uh, compressor the metering station offshore pipeline the vent facility and the the valve uh, pigging station uh, the building blocks is the landfall to shore approach uh, the subsea pipeline which is three kilometers no, uh, three hundred kilometers. And the end, uh, the pipeline end, manifold uh, plem, which ties into the injection facility, or uh, as in the Dutch case, it's, uh, it connects into the, the pipeline, which leads from the land terminal out to the reservoir. So, uh, on uh, it's we've studied how uh, how the pipeline could be routed from the from the compressor out to to open water this this uh, and we looked at both uh, uh, routing it uh, directly offshore through the the breakwater or uh, routing it this way uh, yeah I'll just move now. so uh, yes uh, for the for the 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 pipeline solution we also looked into uh, different pressures uh, for, uh, inlet pressure and that depend that uh, it depends on on the diameter of the pipeline uh, it is assumed that uh, uh, the, yeah uh, yes, it's we also uh, they also looked into the possible the the challenges with uh, with uh, uh, pressure uh, at the, the outlet, uh, which is below the the uh, critical temperature, so you can get two flow now two phase flows. That's something you want to avoid. Yeah, that's the pipeline uh, for one moment. That's pipeline for concept one, which is to the. Uh, to direct it to the reservoir. Uh, this this is uh, pipeline two, which is actually pipeline. It's concept two. It should be pipeline uh, concept three, which is to the to the Dutch offtake. This is a bit shorter. Uh, uh, the it, the land the the facility at the export side uh, the landfall solution will be the same. Uh, but the pipeline uh, offshore uh, will be uh, shorter, only 200 kilometers. Uh, it's assumed that the tying of the pipeline will be uh, uh, to the to directly into uh, sorry uh, into the the pipeline that uh, transports uh, CO2 from from the the store uh, shore facility at. Uh, at, uh, at the Dutch terminal uh, into the reservoir to the, the pipeline that leads to the reservoir. So in this way, uh, we uh, we bypass past the the land terminal. So the uh, so in that way, uh, it's not compare uh, completely comparable to the ship transport, as the ship transport will only be from the from the uh, export terminal to the import terminal here. You would avoid the import terminal altogether, together, and therefore there are actually savings. Yeah. Uh, concept one that was the standalone uh, solution. Uh, it's pipeline versus shipping. Uh, we see that the uh, shipping solution and the pipeline solution it's uh, the, the shipping solution which is the fsi which we consider as the most relevant uh, best for comparison 39.7 euros per ton uh, while the pipeline 30 38 per, uh, euros per ton um, so this is very similar uh, if i was going to do the investment i would go go for the pipeline uh, 
However, uh, a pipeline will normally take longer time to 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 install because there there are lots of considerations while the shipping solution is faster to 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 install. But the cost seems to be relatively similar. Uh, the, the, with the shipping with direct uh, unloading is much cheaper, but this is le less robust. So, so you'll, there will probably be other problems. So, so it's not compl completely comparable to to the to the uh, the pipeline solution. Yeah. So there, that's uh, concept one, uh, and the, in general. Shipping versus pipeline. Uh, uh, the results here are, are uh, the, these are uh, preliminary results. So it's so it's uh, uh, you need to read them with uh, some cautiousness. The it's not uh, the cost we present. They're not uh, uh, they're not uh, classified cost estimates. Uh, so uh, so that has to take take into account and also the battery limits at capture uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, yeah it the, the capture uh, the it depends on on the on the the pressure uh, yes okay yeah uncertainty uh, an import hub receiving CO2 from several sources will be of course be uh, have a cost benefit of scale. This is not being considered. Port entry costs. Uh, this is uh, both port entry in, for example, Rotterdam and also in port entry in uh, Dunkirk. Uh, it is has a significant cost associated with it. Uh, this we may get uh, discounts that can can make the shipping solution cheaper. The the pipeline cost is is based on cost per meter, uh, but the landfall costs are are uh, are included as average for pipeline uh, storage at the pipeline storage uh, of distance of of thousand kilometers. Landfall costs are not included. The model of uh, the model has an Indian crew. The the sh the ships have an Indian crew, so there may be higher uh, crew costs for the ship due to local tariffs. And energy costs uh, are uh, uh, they uh, we've we've considered. Uh, co uh, cost of of thousand euros per ton uh, and electricity cost for uh, uh, ten euro cents per kilowatt hour. So uh, and and the, the energy cost will have a lot of imp uh, it will impact the, the 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 cost of the value chain a lot. Okay. So thank you uh, for the, uh, if you have questions, I'll try to answer the pipeline questions as good as possible, but, uh, but uh, I'm the shipping expert, not the, the pipeline expert. So please go ahead. Thank you very much, Martin, for your presentation.